not again. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this dude's stopping us. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, there's no way we're going to get back to the weigh-in on time. There's no way we're going to get back to the weigh-in on time. Hey, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Another episode here of Bass and Furious TV. This is the Bassmaster Open on the Chesapeake Bay. Tyrone Adams. Come on up. He's bringing two fish up to the stage. Hand those over to Jim. Now, I just want to point out to you guys that I've never been to the Chesapeake Bay. I've never even seen the Chesapeake Bay. And so basically what's going to end up happening this tournament is I'm going to put some poles in the car. Uh, I'm going to drive two hours and 45 minutes. I'm going to check in to my Airbnb. Uh, I'm going to get some sleep. Okay. And um, the next day after that, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go fishing. So this is my second ever Bassmaster Open Tournament. And big dreams, big stage, big bass. Like, I appreciate all you guys that tune in. I appreciate everyone that uh, supports the channel thus far. And uh, keep sticking with me. I started it yesterday. Um, today is actually the day I leave for the tournament. So it's a Wednesday. Uh, I'm headed up to the Chesapeake. Uh, get situated and get ready for the uh, tournament day. So I'm headed up there today. But before I go, of course, it wouldn't be me if I didn't have uh something come up so i gotta head to the doctor before i go uh, i got an appointment this morning gonna go uh, knock that out and then i'm gonna head on up and start my drive on up to the uh chesapeake bay so we're all packed up those are rods and reels everything in there good to go a lot of you guys like to give me a hard time about the amount of rods i bring the thing is with this guys it's a two-day derby right you never know what can happen in a two-day derby right you have no clue this is my trunk we're all packed up in the trunk um i honestly say it's pretty light like this is my clothes that's my tackle bag this is like life vest and you know different things like that i got a couple pairs of shoes and i got some food and some medicine like that's pretty light and my pillow i gotta always bring my own pillow um i don't like sleeping on nobody else's uh, pillow and that's mainly for my neck and my back i got it i got like a special pillow right to help me sleep and <laughs> have a good night's sleep so um we are packed up we are ready we are headed to the doctor like i said and then we're gonna head to get a rental car and then we are headed to the derby so and I'm actually I'm trying to get to the doctor early because I want to get my rental car early and I want to try to get out of here early. So um, that's what's happening right now. I'm um, trying to head to the doctor like way early so I can get there and uh, get this show on the road. So stay tuned, boys, ladies. We're going to get after it. Let's go. All right, guys. So here we are. We're at the doctor's office. A couple things checked out real quick um, before I head off on the road and um, get after it. Um, nothing crazy. I don't have no no fever, no headache, no nothing like that. Just I normally get like some type of weird sinus, not weird, normal sinus infection. So I just need them to check that out. So we'll see. All right, guys, we're here picking up the rental car. We're at the, as you can see, Enterprise. Usually who we go to for our cars. Me and my wife usually get our rental cars from here. So picking up the rental car. It's a tiny car, but I was able to get everything in here and uh, rods, reels, everything, all my stuff in the back. And I actually got a pretty clean back seat. So uh, feeling pretty good about that and looking forward to the ride. It's only supposed to be about two and a half hours. It was supposed to be like three and some change, but now it's going to be two and a half. So that's pretty good. And um, we're going to get after it. Hopefully this thing has AC because I'm... All right, guys, we're still on the journey here. We're on uh, 95 to 395 to 495 to 695. We, uh, we still out here. It's uh, moving a little slow, making a journey. Up in DC now, though, in the capital. Let's go. All right, guys, here we are. We are, uh, you guys can see everyone up there, but here we are. This is the Bassmaster Open. Um, stop number three of the Northern Division. I am signed up as a co angler. They got some food for us, some snacks, a little towel, uh, a couple things in regards to the bonus bucks and stuff like that. So, um, you guys can see the stage, right? This is it. The stage we're all hoping to get up on a little bit later. Big bass, big dreams, big stage. You guys know what it is, man. So excited to be out here. I believe there's a chest beat behind me. I don't know. I ain't never been up here. So I'm assuming they wouldn't put the launch by somewhere that we're not actually going to fish from. But um, that's it. And um, just got checked in. You got to check in at this one, unlike some of the other tournaments I do. Um, you got to check in at this one. You got to see a smiling face. And uh, we're ready to go. I literally have everything already rigged up in my car. Um, I'm going to go home, I'm going to watch some, not home, I'm going to go to my Airbnb, I'm going to watch some TV, and I'm going to sleep. That's what's going to happen. And then I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm going to go catch some bass. So, um, looking forward to it. 
Uh, should be a good time out here. A lot of good people out here. Saw a couple people up there already. Saw um, Jacopo up there, um, Daryl Gleason up there. A couple guys here um, getting situated. Um, people still pulling in. My check-in time was three o'clock. Unlike the last one though, um, I got to go like right in. Last time I showed up at like early, like one o'clock, which I thought was my check-in time. I think it was. But man, there was a line out the door last time. This time, just kind of walk right through, get your stuff, get situated, and get on the water. As you guys see, I already got me a hat, a little Bassmaster hat. You guys see that Revital Outdoors, you know what it is. So um, here we go. I'm gonna go find my rental car. I don't I gotta remember what I'm driving. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna get after it, guys. And like I said, go back to the room, relax a little bit, and uh, see what we can make happen. So one more thing, guys. Um, so basically, once everybody gets checked in, like once the check-in's all done, that's when they send out the information in regards to um, who your partner's gonna be. It's raining, it's been raining for a little bit up here. I think, I'm pretty sure like any fishery, that's gonna change the bite a little bit. So some guys have been doing certain things that ain't gonna fly. Uh, so I'm hoping that, you know, whoever I get, we kind of figure that out and piece it together. So, um, like I said, I'll have my partner thing a little bit later on this evening and kind of go from there. I'll keep you guys informed, so we'll keep the vlog going. That's cool. All right, guys, so we're here at the Airbnb getting situated. I got a couple of things I just want to get organized in my bag. As you guys can see, I got my heating pack. I'm going to get some heat going on my neck, but we're here at the Airbnb. We're checked in. We're in Elkton, Maryland. Um, basically, next steps is to wait till we get that message about my partner information and then um, go ahead and get rigged up. I got all my poles and stuff in the car. They're already rigged up, but I just got to find out what this guy was thinking about doing and um kind of go from there so that's the next step but for right now i'm just gonna chill i'm trying to see if there's netflix in here and just go watch some movies and relax hopefully fall asleep and take off is at 6 30 but i think i gotta meet my partner a little bit earlier than that obviously um depending on what flight we are and uh so i'm gonna have to work on that part and um good thing is about this airbnb is i'm only six minutes away from the ramp so that's pretty cool six minutes away from the ramp so i can get there get it in and uh Go get, uh, get situated from there. So let's go. Hey guys, good morning. This is tournament morning. We are here at the Bassmaster Open. Go get them last. Uh, Bassmaster Open. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to vlog everything for you guys. So I'm here. I'm waiting. My boater's on his way up here um, to pick me up. As you guys can see, I got my rods, reels. I packed extremely light this time, guys. This is the smallest tournament bag I've ever bought to a tournament in my life. And it's the second biggest, no, third biggest tournament of my life. So it is what it is, man. I, I Either they're going to bite some things and I got some things I feel comfortable with um and that's what's gonna happen so um, a lot of guys in the water already getting situated as you guys can see um this is the stop number three of the northern division uh we're on the chesapeake bay we're launching out of anchor marina huge thank you to i believe it's cecil county maryland is where we're at um very nice people everybody down here that i've run into has been very nice very polite um, i'm staying up here in elkton maryland uh, i've never been up here before in my life but um it's a pretty nice place I've, i'm enjoying myself thus far um, I did go to the Royal Farms and it was nice. Nobody was mean. So I'm okay with that good stuff. Um, that's all I did. I didn't really go anywhere, guys. I was pretty much organizing tackle all night. So, um, but yeah, we're here. This stop number three. Um, second stop for me, because I only did two out of the three um, tournaments this year. But as you guys can see, beautiful, beautiful. It's supposed to be a nice day today. I got my rain stuff on, because you never know. And uh, I'm ready to go, guys. We're ready to get after it. A couple of my favorites I got tied on. Of course, you guys can see, I never do this for you, but this I got my Jabber Jaw tied on. Got a buzzing bait, spinner baits, of course, a Senko, and a drop shot, and something to flip around. I have no idea what we're going to be doing today. It doesn't really matter. Um, pretty much, you just got to adjust uh, no matter what. So, just tied on a couple things that I've been used to fishing, and we'll figure it out from there. So, stay tuned. Bassmaster open, stop number threes northern division um looking for three fish in this deal again this is three fish um for this deal so looking forward to three fish uh three of the right ones that's what we're looking for uh thankful as always to god for another opportunity to get out here and fish thankful for another another day and an amazing family um an opportunity to get on the water so um and huge shouts out to my wife for holding things down with the kiddos while i'm out here fishing so i appreciate her and um yeah we're gonna get after it guys so stay tuned let's go So this by far is one of the craziest things I've ever had happen to me in a tournament. Probably the craziest thing. So basically, we end up getting stopped by the Army police here. Um, basically, it's an Aberdeen area on the Chesapeake Bay, which they have it kind of uh, blocked off with like these yellow buoys that you're not supposed to go inside that area. And basically, we were running back into weigh-in and my boater 
inadvertently, you know, mistakes happen, things like that. Uh, inadvertently came in too close to the Aberdeen area, which warranted them to send a boat after us to stop us. Uh, we weren't sure that boat was stopping us uh, per se, because for me, I had no idea what was going on. So I had no clue. Uh, my boater, he wasn't sure. He slowed down. Um, but then it didn't look like they were headed our way. So he kept going. And when he kept going, that then triggered them to send another boat after us. This boat came after us with sirens going, lights flashing, flags, hand gestures. I mean, all kinds of stuff for the Aberdeen area. They were basically trying to get us to stop. And they did. They pulled right in front of our boat as we were going and made sure that we stopped. Uh, came at us pretty intense. Um, pretty intense. More intense than I've ever had anything in the water I've ever dealt with in my entire life. They came at us pretty intense and um, basically uh, wanted us to stop. Obviously, what we were doing, wanted us outside of the area. So basically, he told us to follow him outside of these yellow buoys, um, made us sit there while he sat there. And then he subsequently ended up calling the Marine Enforcement Unit on us um, to come talk to us and obviously ticket us for running in the area. And basically, as he explained it, he indicated to us that they were doing some active uh, testing, shooting type drills in the area on this Saturday during the tournament. They were doing these things and nobody was allowed in there. You're not allowed in there anyway, um, ever. Inside of these yellow buoys, you cannot go in there. And... Um, it, we're talking guys from the distance, let's say like a football field, if you're in the end zone versus you're on like the 30 yard line, we're talking that short of a distance. So if my boater runs on like the 10 yard line from the 30, we're good. The 15, questionable, they may stop you, but anywhere past that, like, so basically we're talking give or take a few yards right or left. Well, I'm sorry, right, but definitely right. Anything on the left, you're in violation. Anything on the right, you're you're good. Um, like he said, my boater apologized to me. It's, it's an honest mistake. He's not from the area. He's from Minnesota. He practiced. He ran through a similar route on his graph. He never got stopped. Nothing ever happened. And I believe that's because they weren't doing the active testing, shooting drills, anything like that during the time. Um, so they weren't really like out there, like, you know, going after people and stuff like that. But basically we weren't the only boat they stopped. They stopped several other boats. Um, like I said, they came at us pretty intense when they finally stopped us with the flags and the yelling and all of this. You know, what do you guys think you're doing? What are you doing? I mean, guys, like they are in there. And me, I'm just like, not again. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this dude's stopping us. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, there's no way we're going to get back to the weigh-in on time. There's no way we're going to get back to the weigh-in on time. One. Two, I was thinking that honestly, because it's a lot of discussion now is about DQs and people not following the rules and this, that, and the third. I was thinking that once we got stopped on the water and we got a ticket on the water, I was thinking I couldn't weigh my fish anyway. So I thought I was going to zero regardless. When I came back in and discussed it, I found out that that's not the rule. There's a separate set of rules regarding what happens on the water versus what happens in the boat in the tournament. It's a separate deal there. Um, obviously, different people feel different way, but I refused to go to weigh in with my fish. I didn't want to walk across the stage with my fish and then get told afterwards I got disqualified. Um, but I did talk to the tournament director. I, I clear he's like, dude, you got to weigh your fish. He's like, if it comes down to a tiebreaker tomorrow, you got to at least say that you came across with something. He's like, you gonna get a zero today, but at least you did come up to weigh. And I looked at the thing. I got a one beside my name instead of people who actually zero zero. They got actual zeros. I got a one. So if it did come down to a tie on the next day. I would have had that one for th uh, that one beside my name, which would have bumped me ahead of whatever they were doing. So needless to say, guys, I've never been in that position before. It was a little scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, I just wanted to get home safe to my kids and family. And you got the Army police and you got the other police and the Marine Enforcement Unit. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. He came over. He talked to us. He explained the rules, all that. But um, yeah, intense. Not something I was prepared for. Not something I was thinking was going to happen. And it ended up happening, and that's that. So stay tuned, guys. Day two coming up. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Keep rocking with me, man. Still more to the video. We're still not done yet. So, All right, guys. Just got weighed in on the Bassmaster stage here. I um, actually got my picture on the stage this time, which was pretty cool, I guess. I'm glad I did do that. Um, headed to get my stuff out of the boat and got my day two partner. Um, information, going to connect with him. And then I think I'm going to go grab something to eat and relax this evening. See if I can get ready to, have to get after tomorrow. So stay tuned. Uh, keep the vlog going, guys. Let's go. Yes, sir. I watch the channel, of course. I'll be checking out the co-angler tips and tricks. <laughs> All right, guys. Back in the uh, room here. 
Time to lay down and get some sleep. As you guys can see, I'm looking a little crazy. But um, yeah, we're back at the Airbnb. Um, just finished up with the uh, Bassmaster Open Day 1. Um, if you scroll down the standings, you'll see me in about 85th place showing that I have zero pounds. Basically, I had a fish, almost a four-pounder. Um, it's the only bite I had all day. Caught it, and that's it. That's pretty much the tournament. I had one bite. Um, a lot of things went on throughout the day. Some things that I, you know, eh, okay. Basically, uh, my fish weight didn't count for today. I got another big fat zero. Just like the last Bassmaster Open Day 2, I got a big fat zero. So, even though I had a limit. <sighs> Guys, I, I I just don't know. I don't quite, I don't quite get it. I'm a little kind of taken aback, I guess, but um. You know what? As you guys know, always going to stay focused, keep grinding, keep my head down, and continue to trust God because he know what he's doing and I ain't got no clue. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep working. We're going to keep pushing. Still got day two to go of this. So I got to finish this up. As you guys can see, I'm just watching some YouTube. Got my rods and reels over there. And um, that's it, man. We're just kind of chilling this evening. Um, and going to see how things shake out in the morning. So, guys... Uh, you're watching this video in real time hopefully you already pulled for me to do well but um you i think you get what i'm saying uh, like i said we're gonna get back after it and uh stay tuned got the heating back on because it was a bumpy ride too chesapeake bay ain't no joke when that wing gets to pushing against the uh tide it's so oh. okay so anyways another day another tournament another zero let's get after it on day two All right, guys, Bassmaster Open, day two. We're on the water. Uh, looking forward to a good day out here. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, it's quite a few people out here doing their thing. So uh, excited to see how it's going to go and how it's going to shake out. Thankful as always for the opportunity and going to give them the best shot. Let's get it. You did? Dude, my skills are important. What? We're at the weigh-in. Guess what, guys? I got two bags and one of them is mine and i'm actually going to get to weigh in some fish today so stay tuned guys let's get it all right guys we're in the weigh-in line you can see quite a few people here got some fish so we're in the weigh-in line um got a bag of fish and about to see how it uh, shakes out man. So, oh, man. tyrone adams <laughs> Come on up, me bringing two fish up to the stage. And those over to Jim. Better day today, it looks like. Yes, sir, much better day today. Had a blast with Garrett. Yeah, I bet that was fun. Two fish for you today. Gonna check in at 310 today, 310 today. Thank you, Tyrone. Yeah, you can grab one real quick. All right, guys, just uh, wrapping up the day here at the Bassmaster Open. As you guys can see, Chesapeake Bay, people still weighing in, but as of right now, um, I'm sitting in 57th place with three pounds, 10 ounces for the day. So three pounds, 10 ounces for the day. Um, I had 310 yesterday as well. So my weight should be seven, four, seven, five, something like that, which would actually have me in like 24th place right now, well inside a check range. And there's not a million people left to weigh in. So um, this one's gonna sting a little bit, guys. This is gonna sting a little bit because basically, I had a chance to get a check and I did enough to get a check and um, didn't work out. So, but it's all right, guys. Uh, yeah, this is gonna sting a little bit, but uh, this is gonna sting a little bit. So we'll see. We're done with the bass fishing tournament. Nine for the Panthers. And. Uh, come back home and life picks up right where it's at so we're right here on a friday night football the night football under the friday night lights so i realized i had done this whole video but i actually didn't do the uh bait recap and i don't have them with me now but i want to get this video out and out so i can get to some other videos that i got coming up um so basically on day one i caught my fish on a jabber jaw deep uh we were fishing out a, a little bit um sort of kind of but not really um fishing around some docks and you know stuff like that so i ended up casting on my jabber jaw deep um ended up getting a nice fish on the jabber jaw deep like i said that one didn't count um unfortunately uh i definitely caught the fish i definitely got him in the boat uh he was in the live well like he definitely should have counted but he did not count because we got back 
um, too late for my fish to count. So basically when we got back like 10 minutes late, that fish would have been almost four pounds. Uh, so my official weight would have been negative six pounds because you lose a pound every time up until you get to zero. They don't negative you, but you get to zero. So um, that fish didn't count. But the day two fish, I caught those flipping a uh, creature bait. So basically I had to dig deep in my box and find some stuff so I could kind of match what my boater was doing and uh, based on the type of cover that we were fishing. Literally, we we're both doing the exact same thing because that's the only thing that would go in that little area. It was really tough to figure out something to go in the area that we're fishing um, and a rod big enough to handle getting the fish out. So I found the right setup. I got in there. Um, I hooked two fish like that. Got them both in the boat. Good to go. You guys saw um, those two fish came to the scales for 310. And um, again, one was like a three pounder or like 214 and one was like 12 ounces. Like. Uh, one was teeny teeny and then one was pretty good so um that's what happened on day two that's as far as bait recap uh texas rig creature bait i was throwing a uh, weight on there i uh, had it pegged all that for my texas rig creature bait i was throwing that on 13 fish and omen uh heavy action rod with the concept a reel and i think i had about 15 pound fluorocarbon or maybe 17 pound monofilament not sure um and then I did catch some smaller fish throughout the day, uh, throwing like a wacky rig or something like that. I caught some other fish there as well. But um, that's about it for the bait recap. On day one, I caught another fish, a small fish, I think still throwing the crankbait or maybe shaky hit, something like that. I'm not sure. Or maybe my creature bait. I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of getting all blurry because I didn't get to cash a check. Uh, I would have made maybe seven, eight hundred dollars, maybe five hundred dollars, something like that. But I definitely would have left there with a check and i left there with nothing so i pretty much just kind of blocked that out so that i can keep fishing and, and focus on my next thing kind of remember what i did and but then just move on past that because i could literally sit there and beat myself up over that but i did nothing wrong right like so i did nothing i did 100 percent absolutely nothing wrong i did fish some different stuff that i shouldn't have fished some time wasted while i was trying to figure out what was going on stuff like that but as far as like catching fish and bringing them to the scales i did nothing wrong and that kind of bothers me that i didn't so i had to move on because i had another tournament like the very next week so i had to get right right back in the right frame of mind to get out there and catch fish and think things think positive think think good things are going to happen so that's kind of what i did so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i appreciate everyone watching appreciate you subscribe to the channel um and i hope for, that you guys still continue to rock with me on these next videos i got some more coming out here as soon as well so as always peace peace and i'll catch you on the next one i'm out